Hello, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mings, and I welcome you guys uh, back to Let's Play uh, Path of Radiance on the Maniac Mode. Uh, hi, Mecca. Yes, yes, the best mode ever. I love it. I love fighting enemies, as many as possible, please. A lot of people pointed out that uh, Maniac Mode is simply just a prelude to, you know, Awakening Lunatic Plus, where you just have to use Frederick for everything. <laughs> it's actually not a bad comparison, because we have to use Titania for everything. So. Frederick has like <laughs> I said, Frederick. Awakening has high quality enemies, though. Yeah. They're like the opposite, actually. They're like really strong and powerful, but they're very fragile. Yes, yes. So you have to kill them quickly. Here, they're super bulky, but they're weak. <laughs> so yes. it's like a slow, slow torture. <laughs> you tried every angle. So welcome to chapter nine. Let's see if we can get the whole thing in one frame. We might have to skip nope. out on some playable. Ah, we can just. I mean, it's the enemies who want to watch, right? The uh, enemy. Uh, the enemy. Uh, 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 Poor pirates. Uh, it's not gonna be on there. There we go. I think okay. I got all. I think I got all of them. So, yeah. yeah, some of them cut, cut in half, but that's fine. <laughs> that's what. That's what gonna end up happening to them anyway. <laughs> the maps ain't gonna get any smaller from now on, you know. So uh, this is how the map looks on uh, maniac mode, and uh, this is how the map looks on difficult mode. Uh, you know that easy pleb mode that you guys are playing on. Wow, I wonder which enemies are not there on maniac mode, or that are there on hard mode, or vice versa, because that actually makes sense. Well, wow, fancy, fancy you would ask, Mecca, because I'm about to show just that. Oh wow, look at these fancy white circles. How convenient. Look at these fancy white circles. They they outline what enemies are here on uh, maniac mode. Wow, did you hand draw these? No, um, there's like this fancy computer program that does it for me. So yeah, this is how the map awesome. looks. Um, I'm, I, yet again, I'm gonna do a bit of a comparison. We're gonna take a look at the boss of the chapter. His name is uh, Kutava! <laughs> Sounds Russian or something? Or like German? <laughs> yeah, a bit Polish maybe? Yes, the scariest enemy type, or the scariest weapon in the game, the Night Killer. Oh, the Night Weakener. And the R <laughs> the Titania tickler. The night tickler, yeah. <laughs> the night tickler. Arm scroll. And uh, beware, he has counter. Whoa. Hey, this is actually a big deal in a speedrun, okay? Titania can die here. Yeah, yeah. I guess counter is a very good counter to Titania, isn't it? Because <laughs> she deals a lot of damage to herself. Yeah. So it's like uh, it's like a boss with a with a introverted devil weapon or something. That's kind of weird. So the. I'm gonna check out the level of the enemies once again. Uh, I'm noticing a common trend that uh, actually these guys are starting this is high level. Yeah, level, level fifteen. Level, yeah, the mages are only level eight. Fighters level thirteen. Yeah, the enemies have definitely leveled up a little bit since the last chapter. So it seems like maybe maniac mode is starting to overtake difficult mode because in the last chapter, uh, the, the difficult mode enemies were almost as high level as the maniac mo uh, mode enemies. So maybe they just forgot to level them up or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe there was like an, uh, an enemy Jagan that was like stealing their EXP, but now they benched the Jagan, so they got a lot more EXP to go to work with. <laughs> yeah, so a lot of people really, really hate this pirate, because he goes for the village, and I think he reaches it on turn 4 or something. And you might think, oh, just send Titania or something to go get him, but these coast tiles, they're a bit weird. Uh, infantry units move uh, normally on them, but mounted units movement get cut, cut in half. So you send Titania down there, and this map is also sort of like deceptive because you don't really notice if you send Titania down here on turn one, you go like, "Oh, I can reach the pirate," but then on turn two, you reach the coast style, and you go like, "Shit, I remember struggling with this a lot." Isn't this old pirate also like not? gonna get lured over? Does he like straight up go for the village instead of attacking? Yeah, he's like that annoying pirate in uh... Erica chapter 9, yeah. Yeah, that, that just, he, he will he will rush for the village uh, no matter what. So a lot of people, I've actually read threads from people saying that, oh, there's there's no way to save this house, guys, it's impossible, he's just there to troll you. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, no, there is a way to get him. I I, I perfected the strategy in my last Let's Play, and I think I remember it, so we'll see if it works on Maniac mode or not. Um, we shall see. Anyway. I'm curious. I, I think I just got it destroyed in my last Path of Radiance playthrough, because I didn't care enough. I think you get a restore staff or something. Yeah, it's not the greatest reward ever. There's two houses in there. You can visit both. Yeah, you get um, you get a talisman in this house, I think, and a restore stuff from this one. So it's not like the gold. biggest treasure. Gold. <laughs> yeah, it's gold. It's gold. So in this chapter, you get two green units. You get uh, Mordecai. Yellow. Yeah, they're yeah. I'm colorblind. Really? It's actually it's actually a di difference, you know. They, yeah, because um, and left, of course, right here. Um, 
We're gonna talk about them when they join, which isn't this chapter. But yeah, I like my- I like how left is on the right. <laughs> so, we didn't include the base in this part, because there's really nothing interesting going on there. I, we don't really have money for a forge this chapter. And, don't do uh, well. Nah, Did I you have anything to sell? The red gem, but I had to buy javelins. Oh, I see. The red gem is only worth 2,500. So aside from a support with Soren and Riss and Titania, there's not really a lot going on. But we get I some see. good units right here. And then I only see one good unit. <laughs> Stop being such a brat, you little twerp. <laughs> hey. <laughs> I'm here on my own time, okay? <laughs> All right. <laughs> so let's talk about uh, the good unit first. There is uh, Mist. So Mist's. She, at first glance, she kind of looks like uh, Riss, but bad. So she joins pretty late. She's a healer. She's stuck on five moon. I think she's essentially the same class as Riss. But yeah. what separates uh, Miss from Riss, aside from poor availability, is that she um, she promotes to a Valkyrie rather than a uh, priest. So she gets a mount. Instead of life magic, she gets swords, which is eh, not so good. But I think she's the only mounted healer in the game. And keep in mind that in this game... Kanto is insane, because she can run in, heal, and then Kanto back, which is extremely useful. And there are it some is. there are some people who, who like training up her sword rank and use the Sonic Sword on her, which, yeah, if you get there, maybe use an arm scroll on her, that's not bad, but the Sonic Sword will eventually run out of uses, and I think it's a lot of work for not a lot of gain, if you ask me. I mean, I don't, I don't like, really consider Mr. Fighting Unit, and she, honestly, she might be one of the few units in this Let's Play that I'm gonna, like, auto-promote at level 10, because... Why wouldn't you want to auto-promote her early? It's not like you want to want her to see combat, and you want her to get that mount as soon as possible. Um, she's pretty frail, as you might be able to see. 16 health, 2 defense. She, ironically, has 2 more base defense than Riss, which is kind of funny. <laughs> um, but yeah, her bases are really low. Keep her far, far away from combat. For the first 10 levels, she's effectively just a walking heal staff. She does exactly the same as Riss, just even frailer. Uh, she comes with the um, prayer skill, which is really shit in this game. Has a luck percentage chance of halving the damage of a lethal blow. So if Miss is on 10 health and she takes um, 20 damage from like a Steel Lance and Miracle procs... She still dies. She can still <laughs> die, which is really bad. It's not as... Like I miss... Uh, like at least in the other games, like in Fire Emblem 4 it wasn't steroids, but... In uh, Awakening and Fates, for example, at least it would put your health down to once. It was like a surefire save that could proc once. But here, even when Miracle procs, it's not guaranteed to save your life. So it's pretty shit. But hey, if it saves a restart, it's nice, I guess. But yeah, so I, I rate Mist 4 out of 5 stars. Uh, she's, she's pretty terrible early on. But once she gets her mount, she is absolutely invaluable. Because having a mounted healer with Kanto is just so good. And if Riss doesn't get as good in the late game as we might think he won't, then Mist is probably going to be our go-to healer, so I rate her highly for that reason alone. Uh, I like Mist, I like her alright. Uh, mostly after promotion, though. Before promotion, I think she's pretty terrible, honestly. You almost always want to use Riz over her if you have to pick between the two. Of course, there's nothing that says you can't use both, but I, I don't know how tight unit slots are going to be. Uh, you definitely don't have the bonus experience from both. Uh, I don't know how many Master Seals you get and how quickly you get them. Maybe you might need your Master Seals in other units. Mm. Uh, if Master Seals are in tight, like, supply, then it might be very hard to get Mist promoted in time, with, like, bonus experience alone, because she levels up so slowly in this game. Yeah. Like, holy shit, it takes forever. Uh, if Master, if you have a Master Seal available for her, for her, I think she's fine. But since it takes her so long to get promoted, I'm assuming she's, like, a three-star unit. Mm. But we'll see yeah, if Maniac Mode can prove me wrong. I think her uh, staff rank is also not that high. It's D. Uh, no, it's E. E. Yeah, that's not that great. <laughs> that's me. That means Riss is, like... Physic, for example, to compensate for Mist having a, a horse at some point. But having the horse is really, really good. To put things in perspective, if she just uses her heal staff, she needs to heal 90 times before she can get to level 10 and promote. So that's <laughs> like 90 turns of healing. Of course, once she Gross. gets the men's staff, that goes up a little bit more. I think you can also get some experience via the, the uh, word staff. And of course, you can give her bonus experience, but man, bonus experience is not easy to come come across in Maniac mode. I doubt no. we'll be able to give her any. So, yeah. but yeah. Uh, I think, yeah, I think I would definitely give Riz Mist like four stars in hard mode, actually, because of that bonus experience thing. Because there you would have enough to get her to like level 21 around like chapter 17. I think it's when I promoted her in my last run. But not on Maniac mode? You, you stay by your three star rating on Maniac mode? Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. Oh, all right, here we go, Mecca. So, yes, <laughs> yes, I see five points of strength. 
Oh, he's like Gordon, but without the memes. So, yeah, say hello to Rolf. Everyone loves Rolf. Man, people won't shut up about Rolf. So tiny. I mean, for newer newcomers to the channel, I understand why you might be excited that we might review Rolf highly or something, but if you watch my Let's Plays for any amount of time, I don't understand, like, how you can think that I will rate him anything but a one-star unit. I'm just gonna do it early, because let's just get it out of the way. Why is Rolf a one-star unit? Well, if I have to explain to you how bad archers are, like, just just go watch Pitfalls or something, I don't know. Um, but I think instead of trying to explain why archers are bad, I'm gonna talk about why people think Rolf is good. So they go like, oh, he's... He's, he's got good growths. Not really. His growths are pretty similar to most other units in this game. Like, between 40 and 50% in most areas. Uh, I don't really understand. I think it's actually a pitfall, to, to excuse the phrase. I think, I think it, or at least a misconception. It's okay, that's okay. <laughs> because peop, I don't know why people think that Rolf has good growths. He doesn't. The only thing he has is a lot of levels to grow. Yeah, he starts at level 1, so technically he's got 39 levels to utilize his growth rates. But I don't see why this is a good thing. Uh, especially when his bases look like that. I will give him something. He does come with his personal weapon, the Rolf's Bow. Which is like a steel bow with one less might. Uh, but it has a shit ton of hit. And also decent crit on it. And it also gives him two weapon experience. So you can level up his weapon rank with it. So at least they had the decency to put a personal weapon on him. Because they realized that a level 1 archer is terrible at this stage during the game. But honestly, I don't see how it saves him. Uh, he's like, and even if you pour a lot of kills into him and, and kill a lot of units with him, you still only get a unit that kills an enemy on enemy phase. And you've seen how many enemies there are in Maniac. I don't really know how Rolf justifies putting any experience into him. I'm gonna use him. I'm gonna use his chip damage for what it's worth, and then he goes permanently to the bench, never to be seen again. Sorry, Rolf fans. So five stars. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just cover the things that Magnus didn't cover. I pretty much agree with everything he said. I think Rolf would be pretty bad if he joined in Chapter 1 and we're in Chapter 9, so that's pretty bad. I think he has, his bases are like worse than Ike's, so that probably tells you quite a bit about him. Uh, like, uh, the thing in the lower left says, like, effective against flying in Japanese, but uh, effective multiplier in this game is 2 instead of 3, so that's like minimal extra advantage. This, game, this is a really bad game for archers because there's so many enemies, and it's so enemy phase heavy since the enemies are not much of a threat to anyone, so fighting an enemy phase is more important than theoretically having better stats. Not that Rolf has better stats, but even if he did, he wouldn't really be better than anyone else. So there's just... And then there's like the Maniac, Maniac Mode EXP problem where there's like barely enough EXP to get Oscar, Boyd, and Ike up to par, let alone, or Soren, let alone Rolf. So there's just no redemption for this guy. I feel bad for him. And he also looks like he's five years old. That doesn't help. So one star. <laughs> One star for this. <laughs> too, this yellow hair. too young. All right. Oh, I've heard that he. I've heard that he does zero damage to enemies in this chapter, so that's gonna be exciting. Probably. So uh, we'll talk about Mordecai and Lef when they join. Uh, for now, we'll just utilize them for what they're worth. Well, you don't consider Legos part of your army, you racist. No. Can you can you mouse over Ike real quick? Yes. Ah, yes, look at that. He has, his level is thirteen. Is his <laughs> he is thirty-seven? <laughs> he's lead. He, he's lead. Yeah. <laughs> Five star unit. I gave him I gave him two bonus experience in the base because he was at ninety eight. I don't remember his level up, but he got something out of it. Oh, I thought you did it just to get this. <laughs> oh no, I didn't actually. Yeah. No, I I didn't think you did. I think it was just a great like this is a sign from God that you have to use Ike. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I was gonna bench sign him, but I, but I guess when you put it that way, I guess we have to go. We have to use yeah. him now. So the turn count requirement for this chapter is eight turns to get one hundred and fifty bonus experience. We'll see if we can it's do gonna it. Be tough with Titania back there. Yeah, oh well, we got two green units to help us. Oh, sorry, yellow units. Yellow. So, I'm gonna racist. show you my... <laughs> How is that racist? I'm colorblind! Know. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that is true, I forgot your disability. I'm sorry for being intolerant. <laughs> Thank you. Wow, Titania really fell off, didn't she? Uh, yeah, so... 16 damage. I did not buy enough hand axes, because I've already run out, and we can't buy any of this chapter, because like it's every oh, other yeah. turn, javelin hand axes, which is really, really annoying. So, yeah. so what I what I like to do the first turn here is I like to tell Lef and Mord Mordecai to halt, um, because if you don't, they're gonna run off. And Mordecai he doesn't transform yet. Lef does so right away, but Mordecai he spends a couple turns on transform. So I find that he just runs into these guys and gets killed without being able to retaliate okay. back. Because Lagus can't yeah. kick in this game. <laughs> I was going to suggest that you expose Mordecai so that he faces enemies and like transforms quicker, but I don't know how much that speeds it up. 
Uh, and how much that impedes you. That's but not a bad idea. That is not a bad idea, actually. What I like to do is I like to put my guys on edge, and then I like to. <laughs> you always like putting people on edge. <laughs> <laughs> and then I and then I like to tar tell them to attack next turn so that they sort of attack with my units. That's that's the plan that I had at, at any okay. rate. Anyway, yeah. it's time for my amazing shove strats. Are you ready? I'm uh, not ready, but it's okay. You did it anyway. Yeah. So a lot okay. of people, I perfected this back in the day because a lot of people go like, "Oh, you can't reach that guy." You can. You just gotta shove like four times. Oh, gross. <laughs> can't, you just, can't you just have rescue drop them with Oscar then if you were gonna do this? No, because I need Titania. You'll see. I need Titania in the spot that she's in right now because I need her to kill the mages. Because the mages are gonna block the path, and I, I need Oscar too to lure in that fighter to the left-hand side there, because he's gonna block. Because there's so, even on difficult mode, this is an issue. There's so many enemies here that they clog the they clog the choke points, and Ike is the only one who can. Good job, Oscar. He's the only one who can reach that uh, pirate. So Titania can't reach him. If you try to send Titania after him, she won't reach him because she's gonna get slowed down by the sand. So well, this was I I did. And I I remember doing this in my first let's play because I really wanted to get the house and then I realized it's too late that sending Titania over there does not help so I had to restart and then I realized that Ike's not gonna get there either and you don't get Marsha so both yeah and you don't you don't you don't get Marsha until it's too late so the only mm. way you can do this is either to rescue drop Ike but then you get clogged by the enemies. Or you have to shove him four times. And Boyd and Riss are the only ones in my army that can shove him. Nobody else can. Everyone else is too tiny. <laughs> it's just kind of dumb. That is actually a drawback of being mounted that we haven't really discussed. Is you cannot shove people. You can rescue drop, which is like just as good. But in some situations, you want them to shove really badly and they can't. That kind of sucks. It is really annoying because shoving is so good in this game. That not being able to shove is sort of a detriment, but Kanto sort of even sit out, no problem. And now this broken Kanto more than makes up for it, yeah. And here left goes. By the way, I don't take orders from Lagoose, but if you use the direct command, you can order me around. So she's a hypocrite, I guess. <laughs> it's a cute conversation. I just want to say again, I love Mordecai as a character so much. He He's is so cool. He is such a lovable. He's giant. adorable. <laughs> he is. He is. So, yeah, he also comes with a Lagoo stone, but he doesn't use it because he's good, I guess. I'm happy that he doesn't use it. So keep in mind, using direct does not consume Ike's turn, so do it before you end turn with him, though. If you end the turn, you can't do it anymore. So I like to yeah. tell them to roam here on the second turn. That way they'll they'll help out, because I got the Scrub Brigade here, and I think they badly need the help from left. Because there's a lot of enemies here. <laughs> hey, now you got a sword and a Scrub. Yeah, he's... Yeah, he's the, <laughs> he needs help, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I'm looking at these guys and I'm not really... It's okay, Leth's Leth stats are like almost as good as Titania's. She's really good. She's really good, yeah. I mean, those spaces are insane. Do you remember when we get these two? I think it's like a couple chapters from now? I think it's next chapter, honestly. Yeah. Pretty sure. So I, think, I know you get him before chapter 10. Ah, uh, shit. This guy has 14 speed. I think he... Nah, he doesn't double Soren, but... Murderous. I don't. You can't tell them to attack individual units, but I'm not sure who no. Leth's gonna go for here. I think she might take out the archer. I would go for the archer if I was Leth, and mm. I think that's how the AI generally works. So, uh, Mordecai is just gonna follow her around to sit tight. <laughs> yeah, so what I can do is I can. You might be able to kill one enemy with the combined scrub be great, but the rest is just gonna gang up on someone and kill him. Like, there's no way you're gonna take on this group. Yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. So, I guess uh, Rolf can. Because if Leth kills the archer, that leaves only the Myrmidon. These guys are too far behind to do anything. So, as long as this I. Turn, yeah. So, as long as I put a unit in front that can survive the Myrmidon, I should be good. And Rolf should you're be. You're safe able... for one turn, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't but... know for how long you are safe, but you are safe for one turn. Oh, wow, he crit. Jesus. Wow. Nice. Trying to prove you wrong. He's... It's to prove Bang's wrong squad. <laughs> it's to prove Bang's wrong squad. They finally strike. Reusing memes. That's uh... what we're here for. <laughs> so, I think... Ah, look at that. Oh. But I need to put someone... I think if I put... If I put Mia here, Mia can survive a turn. Against this guy, hopefully. Yeah, she can. Wow, it's only barely two. Only barely. Isn't that isn't that in range of like the other guy behind that guy? He can't. He has to. He has to wrap around in that case, which he won't do. And keep in mind that the green units move before the red units or the yellow units. So I think it's more likely that they'll gang up on Mordecai. <laughs> it's so confusing. I, it's, I mean, it's even more confusing for me, dude. So I'll put. 
If I put... Do you just want to call them green units for the rest of the chapter to make it easier Let's on just you? call them green units. Yeah, sure, whatever. Right, there we go. They're probably going to disobey you for once, so... At least once, I mean. Yeah, so I'm I'm 90% sure Leth will kill the archer. I can't imagine she, she will do it any other way. Yeah, I can't imagine green units not doing what you want. <laughs> can't um, imagine what's that like. This is why Eliana's such like, a, This like. is why Eliana's good. Uh, by the way, we didn't touch upon her personal skill in the, in the previous part, Shade. Um, again, cool. sim similar to Provoke, <laughs> I find it insanely unreliable. I feel like people will go for her if she's in range of a kill anyway, but... I know that there's like an upgraded version of it in Radiant Dawn that yeah. makes enemies... Stillness. Yeah, that makes enemies literally never target you unless you're the only yeah. target, which is good. Um, but yeah, as long as, as long as we stay out of this guy's range, we should be good. It's also on a really fitting character. <laughs> yeah, Volk, is there? Yeah, Volk. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. Um, I think I'll just put Ileana here. There we go. Alright, so here comes the here comes my big strats. So this guy's got a poleaxe, we gotta be careful, but we gotta kill this guy. Now I'm I can do this with Oscar if I can hit. Which is a bit shaky. That two shots. I mean if you can kill the other fighter, you can up close him if you want more accuracy. Yeah, I here's kill the other guy. I wanna kill the poleaxe guy, but I guess I can do because if uh, I I think yeah. Titania can reach this guy with a javelin if I if I kill this guy, which allows me an extra hit on him, which is gonna matter a lot. So Aren't I'm... you going to go for uh, Ike? I, don't know. I think I just go for the javelin, honestly. Yeah, you'll just, you'll. And you can kill Titania or attack someone else with Titania. Yeah, that's right. Yes. You. Yeah. You can still shove Ike twice if you want to. That's exactly what I'm gonna do, because uh, I'm gonna put Oscar here. I gotta be a little bit careful because there's a Polax guy, but we'll see. So, and then I'm gonna shove. <laughs> we'll see. Problem for enemy phase mangs. <laughs> this is a problem for enemy phase mangs indeed. Uh, I don't want to use up okay. the boy. There we go. And Boyd is here to cover. And for that him. is how you reach the pirate. Uh, you literally gotta shove like four times. So he he doesn't double. Do That's... You want to attack with first? If she can reach, she can. I'm a little bit worried about. I'm worried about the Polax guy though. And... Yeah, I think the last Polax did twenty to Oscar. So I hope he moves first and goes after Boyd. That would be ideal. Or he, maybe this guy just goes for Oscar since he's on 18 health. That would be nice. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, in that case, it works either way. Yeah, so Oscar just does not kill. He definitely does not kill, and this guy does not one shot Oscar either, so. No. Uh, I guess it's the first turn. If you can combine for a kill now, yeah, that would be good. Depends. Uh. Please hit. Uh. Eh, sure. it's fine. Well, you can it's... reach him next turn, right? I can, I can keep up with him. I can, yeah, I can keep up with him. Titania cannot though. That's the that's the dangerous part. Yeah, he tree shots him, which is good. I hope Mike doesn't get hit. I don't want to sit through poison animation. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. a venonax. He has a venonax. All right, here we go. Partner face. Yay! Is that a Pokemon? Venonax. Venonax. <laughs> venonax. <laughs> Mordecai. <laughs> left. Left. <laughs> <laughs> I remember someone wrote like a really early Shadow Dragon review, and because of the reclassing, it was like, well, these po these these Pokemon, these units kind of lose their individuality by this. It's, it's kind of like their Pokemon. Go, Jagan, use Volbeam. Jagan, Jagan. <laughs> Titania! <laughs> Sugar. Gotta catch them all. Wow, okay, the Polax guy goes for Titania. Oh, no. Gee, I wonder why. Oh. Well, he could have... Ah, right, because Oscar was blocked. Yep. Man, I love I love enemy movement direction. Let's going forces. So yeah, Mordecai is untransformed and he still tanks this guy like a boss. It's so good. Yeah. You can't do that forever, but when he transforms he takes a lot less damage, so he should be okay. Takes zero. No, there's a mage there, so. It's not a fire mage though, is it? Hmm I don't I hope it's a I, mage. I hope not. That would be really cruel. Uh, I don't even know if like fire is effective against untransformed like who's in this game. I know it isn't in Radiant Dawn. Oh, oh okay. Uh, <laughs> it's, I did like Rolf to see encounter or something. It's effective against Rolf. Crit. Crit. <laughs> oh, wow. Rolf three at killing mages. This is awful. This is hilarious. <laughs> awful. <laughs> Good unit. It's the Rolf Slayer Tome. <laughs> <laughs> You know, every every single weapon should just have like effective versus wolf on it. It'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like something for a fan hack. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, um, I, if I'm kill the pirates. Yeah. Pirate Slayer. Uh, I don't. Sixty nine. You have to do it. But if I miss, he goes for the village. Uh, is he in range of the village? No, right. 
You can you can take two turns if you want, but there's gonna be a lot of mages ganging up on him. They might even get in the way. Yeah, that's the problem. So you think I should kill him then? Or well, I'd be tempted to go for it. I assume Titania cannot reach. She cannot. I remember this I mean, very it's clearly. Only, it's a two mages and there's some kind of melee enemy there, right? Yes. On the left? Yes. Uh, they're gonna get in the way. I think this is your last chance, honestly. All right. No. Oh shit. Well. I hope you can reach next turn. Maybe kill with Titania and come closer so you can like, get out of the way or something. Uh, kill, the, kill one of the other guys. Oh yeah, yeah, Kanto. Um, Doesn't yeah. Doesn't matter what you kill. I'd kill a Polax probably. Yeah, I got, I got another chance to hit him next turn. This is true. Think I should keep the Javelin on her? Uh, is there ranged enemies there? Yes. Which one? There's a mage. Uh, He'll probably go uh, for Ike regardless though. Well, yeah, if he goes for Titania, he's out of the way of Ike, so I'm actually fine with not equipping a Javelin here. Right. Well, let's just get the Polax out of the way. You're kind of low on, like, range and shit, so... I bought three... No, I bought two Javelins. That was all I could yeah, afford. Yeah, but, like, Titania has inventory. She only has four slots. <laughs> all right. That's a problem. Okay. Uh, I did ask them to attack, did I? Yeah, I did. I did. I did. Um... So I think yeah, they're already in attack mode. <laughs> I think what I think if Oscar can kill this guy, yeah, he's still kind of weak. Or these guys are just really buff, actually. I think Boyd goes west or does he go south here? Um, if you go west, you can help distract some more enemies from uh, Titania, like maybe. Yeah, I really want to kill this guy though. Yeah, he's gonna be annoying to Riz. So hey, we, we can, can him and, we can him, yeah, and then have Oscar get the kill. Yeah, and then maybe Oscar can counter down south to help the Scorpion Brigade. I feel like they need. Yeah, Oscar is not gonna move very far on that beach. I'm yeah, not for sure. Maybe heal him first. I don't know. Eh. No, okay. There we go. You gonna go ahead, Riz go south then? I don't know. I mean, Riz can't really reach in time. Yes, if I move. More defense. Wow, he's need. so tanky. I think he has One, two, three, like Gatry space defense at this point. Yeah, I think Gatry has 15 or 16. That's only because I yeah base defense. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. Uh -huh. Yeah. All That's, right. Uh, well, at least it's gonna take hits. I mean, if you have a really durable unit and you can move them in really far and they like fight a lot of enemies, it's kind of the same as if they're like improving their offense in a way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And especially considering he supports with Ike, so he gets a void and defense, which is really good. Um, yeah. Soren's got a uh, C support with Ike as well now. Uh, oh, faster than I remember. I guess the A takes really long. The though. A takes a long time, but the C is pretty fast. So, yeah. okay, so would be cool if you could like transfer the bonus. <laughs> that would be cool, man. They should include a mechanic like that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not really sure what we do now. I think we probably have to leave because. I think yeah. these guys will still go for a kill despite Mordecai. I mean, Mordecai will not transform, I think. Leth will probably kill the mage. But I don't really feel safe here. I see a lot of easy targets for these soldiers in those bushes. I think they're gonna have wow, to go. I don't know if they can get out of range, to be honest. This is a lot of soldiers there. Mm, I can if I go... Oh yeah, right. I could put me... Um, I think this is probably... Wait, can I go here? No. I think... <laughs> no, you can't jump off a cliff. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> I know it's what you want to do when playing this One, mode, two, but you cannot three, jump off. Four, the five, Sorry. Yeah, you're right. Soren kind of stands between these enemies. I mean, I I guess if I move Rolf, I can kill the. Um, yeah, I, I was thinking you can get a kill with Soren. If that's safe, that's definitely what you go for. But I'm paranoid that these enemies can gang up on someone. But I guess if you make sort of some sort of a wall, then maybe they cannot do that. Yeah, I think if we uh, what we do is we send Soren down. We have to kill this mage. So that if we kill this mage, then left will go for uh, someone else. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, so I think we want to use the wind term to maximize our avoidance. Wow, I love that one percent crit. Yeah, it's also like one less damage taken. That's pretty fine. Mm -hmm. And oh, wait. wind maximizes his speed. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Is there right? We have the Talia style weapon triangle in this game, don't we? Yep. We do. I completely forgot about that. So Thunder's and it was good. almost never relevant to Fire Emblem. <laughs> yeah, I keep forgetting it, but the one thing I keep remembering is wind is good is bad against fire because wind causes like fire to become bigger. And if you can just remember that, that's a good like mental note. I don't know. When I try to light a candle while it's storming outside, it doesn't work very well. <laughs> I guess. All right. So if we we have to protect, I'm I can't bank on on Leth killing this guy. But what I I think I'm just gonna put me in front of Rolf to guard. Him. Um, yeah. It's probably gonna go for me, yeah, but whatever. Then Soren can probably kill the guy, combined with Oscar maybe. Yes, we'll do this. Seems safe. And then this we'll keep Wolf and safe, yeah. 
Yeah, and if we, it's really inter imperative that I try to heal every turn with mists, because I want her to get level 10 as quickly as possible so she gets that horse. Um, yeah, and then we put... I, I, if I'm, I think some of these soldiers probably one-shot Ileana. Almost. I think so. Uh, actually, no. She survives a hit. No, we're not, we're not gonna shove. Hey, you wanna move her out of the way? Doesn't that, like, implicate Soren or, like, oh. make Soren vulnerable? Oh, yeah, you're right. Um, there's two enemies that can go for Soren. This is true. Maybe I should keep her then, so she can. Yeah, can if you keep her there, they can only get attacked by one enemy each. Yep. I all right. Think. That is. So the only way they die is like if one of them goes for me. Yeah, but now that this guy is dead, probably not. Wow, she does a lot of damage. Leth is really good. Really underrated unit, actually. Yeah, but my problem with Catlagus is that I think they they tend to um they tend to untransform so incredibly quickly. Well, that's Radiant Dawn. In this game, I think their gauge is the same. It's just hers is like is charged it? earlier. Oh god, yeah, I'm okay. sure it's the same. Ah, okay, I was not aware of that. I thought I I honestly yeah. don't know enough. I on my first playthrough, I don't think I used a single Lagoose unit. I I don't know why. I just didn't like the way they worked. I didn't like how. Oh, never mind. Here yes, we go. I like that. They can transform like mid turn. I like Radiant Dawn. It's really cool. <sighs> ah, there we go. It's okay. More HP for Sworn. Yeah. Like you can like kill the guy on player phase. Look at that! And now Oscar's here, so I think everything is fine. It's just a matter of can Ike reach. Wind tomes are really expensive. I had to buy, get one for uh, for Soren. They're like 900 gold or something. Yeah. I think if Titania kills the mage, I can get there. Yeah. Hi! We had to restart because of you. <laughs> so, now there's both green and yellow units. Lovely!